about 16, 17 years ago, I was working as a school liaison officer at the local high school, Rich East High School in Park Forest. And one of the health teachers came up to me and wanted to know if I could give a class uh, about DUI based on my experience with drunk driving arrests. In my career, I probably arrested more than 500 DUIs and asked me if I could put together a program to talk to the kids. So I spent uh, a considerable amount of time uh, building a program and I presented it. And um, as I went along, uh, I realized that the presentation factually was a good presentation, but it, it was lacking something in the very beginning. And it wasn't until the son of uh, one of the employees of the high school was killed in a drunk driving crash that I suddenly realized to, to make it effective, you have to tell stories to put faces on it. And so I had a picture of the car that he was uh, killed in, given to me by his mother, and she said, These, this is the car that, that he was killed in. Um, can, I know you talk to kids a lot about this. Can you show a picture of the car and tell the story of John, tell what happens when you drink and drive? And from that moment on, I, I suddenly realized now that I had a personalized story and a face, uh, people could relate to it more because they could relate to different people in their lives. From that point, uh, I had given it to a couple of other, other local high schools. And one woman heard me present, her name is Cheryl Bazak, and she said it was such a great presentation, it should be given to every high school in, in Illinois. And I said, yeah, but that would be kind of difficult seeing as how I have a full-time job. But based on, on that comment, my kind of flip answer became a license for life. She and her husband financed license for life for the first year that, that we had it out, and we went to high schools all over the state. In the last 16 years, we have been to more than 275 high schools and civic organizations and given more than 7,000 classes and driver at about DUI. I've known Mike McNamara for years. He's, he doesn't do what people do when they're talking to children. What he does isn't uh, the authoritative, Mike makes right, do what I say, you know. The usual programs, don't do drugs, don't bully people because they're bad things to do. That doesn't work with kids. It just doesn't. I mean, what it mostly does is forces someone to be mechanically compliant, saying, I have to give the right answer when authority is in front of me. When they're gone, I can do what I want. Uh, Mike's really realistic about how kids are, how humans behave. Uh, he knows we make decisions emotionally and intellectually. And his program really hits the emotional side of the brain. And it's very sneaky what he does. It's nice. All right. I'm, uh, I'm Mike McNamara from the Park Forest Police Department. Now, first of all, let me start out. We're going to talk about DUI today. Anybody here know me? No. Do I know any of you guys? No. So if I use you guys, if I say you're a drunk, you're a drunk, you're a drunk, because we're talking about DUI and I'm going to be using examples, it's just an example. I was at a school that I'm not going to name, Elgin Larkin. When I got done with the class, the teacher brought up a girl and she said, uh, the girl said, uh, you called me a drunk. I said, well, yeah, I call a lot of people drunks because I'm using you as examples. And she was, but you said I was a drunk. I said, yeah, a lot of different people I said were drunks because I was using you as examples. She says, you called me a drunk. I go, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. So if I call you guys a drunk, it's only being used as an example, except you really do look like one. All right, anyway. <laughs> We're going to talk about DUI. <laughs> You're the one that looks at not me. All right, we're going to talk about DUI. We're going to talk about the court processes. We're also going to talk about what happens if you get arrested for DUI. We've been working with Deputy Chief Mike McNamara for about 15 years that I know of, and I, I think he was here for a number of years prior to my starting at the school as well. He's been talking to our kids. He comes once per semester, so that's twice during the regular academic year, and he also speaks to our summer school program. His uh, presentation is quite engaging. All the students are extremely interested in what he has to say because of his dynamic nature with the kids. He's extremely animated in the way he delivers the material and I think he makes a huge impact in the kids. But the impact isn't something that could be measured uh, in a short term, it's a long term. And, and uh, I think the difference that he makes is seen over a lifetime by the absence of accidents and bad decision making and things like that. Zero eight means that you're legally drunk. So now we're going to talk about you guys drinking. I'm going to make it legal, okay? Until this class is over, you're all 21, all right? So if I ask you how old you are, very good. All right, so can I win the case, all right? 
What we're going to do now is show the levels of intoxication by taking the average weight of the average guy in this age group, which is 150 to 170 pounds. Which one of you guys is close to that? First guy to raise his hand, you in the orange shirt, what is your first name? Wallerin. I had to think about Wallerin. What is my name? Okay. <laughs> wow, too many beers. All right. <laughs> I've had a few too many. I forgot where I live, but then that's my name. Okay, Wallerin. Okay, how old are you? I'm 14. I told you somebody would mess it up. How old are you? Of there you go. Okay, you are the class party animal. A little slow in the age thing, but you are the class party animal. You're going to a party this weekend with one goal in your mind. What is your goal at the party? Get drunk. Get drunk? Very good. Okay, well, apparently I picked, you didn't even have to think about that. <laughs> all right, <laughs> get drunk, okay? All right, these are all the same. A shot glass full of hard alcohol, five ounces of wine, or a 12 ounce bottle of beer. In Mike McNamara's License for Life classes, I've seen just a range of reactions. Some kids think he's hysterical, which he is. Some kids, you know, will come up to him with tears in their eyes, talking to him about something that happened that happened to them. And with a lot of other kids, there's a real silence in the room that may not come across on video. And you have to be in the room to feel it, but it's when everyone in, in the room suddenly gets the lessons and they've just totally stilled themselves. That's probably the most important response you see from Mike Mack's License for Life programs. And during the presentation, Deputy Chief McNamara put the kids through a sobriety test and see how they do before being under the influence. Then he would put on the drunk goggles and have them see this is how impaired you'd be. And he talks about, well, this is funny, isn't it? And the class is all engaged. And I've even had classrooms, neighboring classrooms, tell us, hey, keep it down because the kids are in such an uproar about uh, how engaging and exciting and animated his presentations are. So you'll take the sobriety test without being impaired, then you put the goggles on, and then you see the difference. And Mike brings the point out, this is funny until you realize that this is somebody who is driving a car and that lives are in the balance. My goal for License for Life is to be able to spread this program to as many listeners as possible. I don't necessarily just want to go to uh, local schools around the Chicago area. We are going further and further outside of our normal range of schools and going to 12 different states and national and regional driver ed conventions. I want to spread this message to as many people to hear about drunk driving as I can because drunk driving is not an Illinois problem. Drunk driving is not a Midwest problem. Drunk driving is a world problem. These two guys were driving along, went out with the intent of getting totally trashed. 25 years old, old enough to drink. I knew both of them for over 10 years. They're lifelong best friends. And when I hear about people that said they're gonna go out and get smashed, my theory is this, fine, go ahead, I don't care. But you better plan ahead, which they didn't. The one kid got in the passenger seat, my neighbor, slammed the door, put his head against the window and passed out. He violated the number one rule of safety in a car, which is what? He did not put his seatbelt on. Always put your seatbelt on. I don't care if you're back in the car out of the driveway, it's gonna keep you alive. His best friend got behind the wheel, did put his seatbelt on, punched it out of the driveway, fishtailed, got one mile away from the tavern, went around a curve, lost control, slammed into a tree in the passenger side. His best friend was thrown headfirst into the tree, bounced off the tree, left part of his brains on the tree, landed out of the car. The car bounced off the tree, went across the street, hit a telephone pole, which then snapped and fell right on top of his head. So he was dead. The other kid was alive. He woke up later on in the hospital, spent two months in the hospital. When he got out, because he was the driver, he was drunk, and he killed somebody, was charged with reckless homicide and DUI. Now you're his attorney. Do you want to defend this case? Do you think you're going to win? His lawyer certainly didn't think he was going to win, so he did the technique called throwing him on the mercy of the court. So we're going to plead him guilty. We're hoping, though, that you show a little mercy on him and don't sentence him to the maximum time in jail, which was seven years. As a matter of fact, he did not get one day in jail. He got probation. Probation means you're convicted, in this case of a homicide, but you don't have to go to jail. So did his lawyer do a good job for him? You know what he told his lawyer? I don't want that. Go back and tell the judge, I want to go to jail. And why would he say that? Yeah, how do you live with that? How do you kill your best friend and not run into his family or friends? The other kid's mother went to the junkyard, took this picture, gave it to me. She said, I know you give these talks all over. Take a picture of this car my son was in. 
If you decide that you're going to drink, then you have to understand alcohol and drugs will affect you faster and more dramatically while you are still growing. And if you still decide that you're going to drink, then you have a responsibility that everybody that drinks does, and it doesn't matter what their age is, and that's not to drink and drive. When I talk to adults, especially when I talk to parents, the most important person in their lives are their kids. And so that's who they focus on, the loss of their children through a drunk driving crash. Kids always think that they're going to live forever. But then if I take the perspective of them losing someone very close to them, their best friend, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, then it makes it personal to them. It's the same story, but on different levels. <laughs> Just comme ça, une seconde comme ça, it was very interesting. Uh, I think what I would memorize was when he talked, uh, he told a story about his daughter because uh, I thought that was really emotional and I thought um, it really made you think about what you should, what your, de your decisions before it, like driving. What, what struck you the most? Um, what struck me the most was the story about um, uh, the daughter and uh, how she almost got killed by like a second away. And I know that I will never drink and drive because of the consequences that it can have on myself and other people. What struck me the most was Sheriff McNamara's story of his daughter in some sort of car crash accident. And it, it was really sad and I think I will never do anything like that. So um, the part I found the most emotional was when he was talking about like getting in a car with your best friend because I was thinking of somebody very important to me so it was really sentimental and the most interesting part was just the uh, like how much how little alcohol you need just to be considered drunk and it was really surprising to me because I had no idea. <laughs>